Hello, YouTube. Do you have port forwarding enabled so your companion app can communicate with Home Assistant? Do you have port forwarding enabled on any other services that no one outside your home needs to access? Would you like to learn how to automatically disable those port forwarding rules when you're at home and then enable them when you're not? If so, today's video is for you. Welcome to the channel. My name's Jeff. I'm a professional IT nerd by day and a Home Assistant enthusiast by night. Join me as I make the dumb stuff smart and the smart stuff easy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro. That's what I have, so that's what the code will be for. Unfortunately, I don't have any other equipment, but if anyone would like to send me some, I'll figure it out and make a video about how to set that up as well. Conceptually, the process is the same for any other firewall that you can securely send commands to. My hope is that if you don't have a Dream Machine Pro, you'll still watch this video to see what's possible and use this as an inspiration for figuring out how to do it with the equipment that you do have. With Ubiquity, there's a web interface. So I'm gonna use curl and JSON to enable or disable the port forwarding rule. Now, there are a lot of different parts to making this work. Some of which you may have already set up and some of which you may not, depending on which of my prior videos you've seen and whether or not you found them useful for your particular setup. Let's start by putting some guardrails on this so that we stay on track. This video is not going to teach you how to configure port forwarding, and it's also not going to teach you what port forwarding is. I'm operating on the presumption that if you clicked on the pretty thumbnail, you already had a good idea of what this video will be about, so you probably already have port forwarding configured. If you don't have it configured, or if you don't know what port forwarding is, drop me a note in the comments and let me know if you'd like to see a video with more detail on that topic. If there's enough interest, I'll add that to my long list of things to cover in future episodes. Now, why did I do this? While I'm certainly not a cybersecurity professional and I don't play one on TV, and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, I do like to try and make things as secure as possible. To that end, I quickly realized that if everybody's home, there's no reason for my home assistant server to be available on the internet. Rather than leave the port forwarding rules enabled 24 seven and allow possible attackers the opportunity to spend hours and hours attempting to compromise my network in the middle of the night while everyone is at home and asleep, it's better to reduce my attack surface and disable the port forwarding when I don't need it. Then when somebody leaves the house and we do need to communicate with Home Assistant, turn those rules back on automatically. Okay, first off, you need to already have your port forward rule configured and working properly. Log into your Dream Machine Pro, navigate to the port forward rule and open it up. In the address bar of your browser, the last portion of the URL will be a long alphanumeric string as shown here. That's the ID for your port forward rule. Copy it and save it in a notepad file or something. We're gonna need that later. Also, make note of the rest of the settings you've configured. Protocol, port numbers, IPs, etc. Next, on Home Assistant, open Studio Code Server. If you don't have it, get it. It's awesome. I'll throw a link in the description to a video I did showing how to install that. It's an add-on and available in the add-on store. If you do not have a directory under your config folder already named scripts, then create one. Then inside of that directory, create a new file called unify.sh like this. The contents of that file will need to be exactly as shown here. Pay careful attention to the spacing. Next up, navigate to your configuration.yaml file. We need to define the shell command as shown here. Just add these lines to the bottom of your file. With me so far? Good. Next, you'll need to have a couple of person entities that use Wi-Fi device trackers instead of companion app device trackers. Why? Well, the companion app device trackers rely on the companion app being able to communicate with Home Assistant. If your port forward rules are disabled, then the companion app will never get notified that you're no longer in the home zone. Could you instead use unavailable or unknown or something as a trigger for the automation? Maybe. I also use the person Wi-Fi entities for other things, so this was easiest for me. Could this also be accomplished by using multiple device trackers on the same person entity? For example, Wi-Fi and the companion app? Again, maybe, but I put this solution together quite a while ago, and some of that stuff was a little flaky at the time. And again, I use the Wi-Fi entities for other things, so there's that. If you wanna mess around with it and modify this to better suit your needs, by all means, I encourage you to do so. In any event, navigate to settings, people, and add a person for each phone that you want to be a part of this automation. I have one for myself and one for my wife. 
My son is a bit young for a phone yet since he's just barely six months old. Here's the person entity for my phone. I called it Jeff Wi-Fi, and then I added the device tracker from the Ubiquiti integration. I covered device trackers and the Ubiquiti integration in detail in previous videos. So I'll leave links in the description in case you missed those and want more info. So now we have a person that will either be home or away, depending on whether or not their phone is connected to the Wi-Fi. We'll use those Wi-Fi people in our automations to enable and disable the firewall port forwarding. Here you see the enable automation. It's pretty straightforward. The first two triggers are one of the phones dropping off the Wi-Fi for 20 seconds. The next trigger is if I turn off leaving neighborhood. If you're not familiar with that, I'll leave a link in the description again to a previous video that I did where I covered the reason for that in detail. But basically it's to deal with the fuzzy edges on the home zone caused by GPS inaccuracies on mobile devices. In the case of this automation, the reason it's a trigger is that if we're going a couple doors down or walking around the block, there's a chance that we may or may not actually be connected to the Wi-Fi since I do have a couple of outdoor access points. Rather than our phones randomly connecting and disconnecting from the Wi-Fi and port forward automations constantly flipping that rule on and off, resulting in spotty connectivity for the companion app, I just decided that if we flip that switch to indicate we'll be nearby, but still not at home, then enable the port forward rule so we're still connected regardless of what Home Assistant thinks the locations of our phones are. Then the action, of course, is to enable the port forward rule. That's done by running the script that we previously defined and passing in the variables that are shown here. Line one is the username of the local user. You cannot use a cloud user for this automation. To add a local user, click the Users tab on the left side of the main interface of your Unify console, and then in the upper right, click Add User. I assigned a complex username and a strong password and made the account an administrator. You'll see the account type is local access. Enter that username on line one and line two is the password. Line three is the IP address for your Dream Machine Pro and line four is the name of the firewall rule. Line five controls if the rule is enabled or not, so it's either true or false. In this case, since we're looking at the automation to enable the rule, it's true. Line six is the destination port and line seven is the IP address that the traffic will be forwarded to. Line eight is the port to forward, and line nine is the protocol. Line 10 is the ID number from the address bar that I told you to save, and line 11 is your Unify site, which will be default unless you've modified it. Most people haven't, and you'll probably know if you did. Okay, now let's take a look at the automation to disable the port forward rule. Once again, pretty straightforward, though we do have some conditions on this one that we'll go over as well. The triggers are one of our phones being connected to the Wi-Fi for 10 seconds, or if I turn leaving neighborhood back on. Under the conditions section, we do have three conditions that must all be met in order for this to run. And they are that both of our phones have been connected to the Wi-Fi for at least 10 seconds and that leaving neighborhood is on. Why are the conditions the same as the triggers? Well, in a nutshell, because when any one of these events takes place, I want the automation to run, but all three must be true in order for it to run. Consider, if nobody's home, and leaving neighborhood is on, and then I arrive home. I don't wanna shut off the port forwarding because my wife still isn't home, so her companion app still needs to receive push notifications, or she might wanna adjust something or check a camera, or if we're out walking around the neighborhood, so leaving neighborhood is off, and our phones are disconnected from the Wi-Fi. Then, as we walk a bit closer to the house, but not on our way home, say we're just walking around the back side of the block, so we're on the sidewalk in front of the neighbor's house that's behind us. We're probably close enough for our phones to reconnect to the Wi-Fi again, but in another 50 yards, we'll drop back off again. So Home Assistant is gonna try and register the two Wi-Fi tracker people as home and then away again. If I didn't make leaving neighborhood a condition, then the rules would disable the port forwarding and then re-enable it again in fairly short order. So lastly, the actions for the disable script. Everything here is identical to the enable script in terms of the values you enter, except on line five, where we set enabled to false. There you have it, automatic port forwarding. If you liked today's video, please help me out and hit that like button, leave a comment below and tell me what you did or didn't like, or tell me about other cool automations that you use that are security minded. If you'd like to see more of my content, please hit that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to ring that notification bell if you'd like to be among the first to know when I upload a new video. Hey. If you don't want to have to pause the video and type all this code in by hand, my patrons have access to all my code over on Patreon.com, including periodic copies of my full configuration.yaml 
automations.yaml, and dashboard files. Stop in, support the channel, and get all sorts of exclusive benefits, such as early access to ad-free videos, behind-the-scenes content, member-only giveaways, free t-shirts, access to the Fast How To Discord channel where you can communicate with me in real time to assist you with problems or issues, and much, much more. Benefits start at just three US dollars per month. Win-win for everybody. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. I'd like to take a moment and say thank you to all my current patrons. You guys are the best. I hope you found today's video informative and entertaining, and I hope that I was able to teach you something new. I hope you liked today's t-shirt, and I'm looking forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next video. If you enjoyed this Ubiquity network automation tutorial, be sure to check out this video about automating password changes on your guest Wi-Fi network. Thank you for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?